In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a KPD keypad. Uh, before you can set up your KPD keypad, there's certain things that I've already gotten started in the project. I've already added an AX800. I've added my sources, my IR sources. And I've gone into the source labeling and I've already labeled those sources. So I know what sources I'm going to add to my keypad and I know which order they're going to actually fall in. So the next thing to actually do Let's go ahead and I'm going to close this one out right here. And I'm going to go ahead over to here. And this is where I add my Axiom devices to my location. So I'm going to do a drop down. I'm going to add a KPD keypad to my project. Okay, when I click on it, this is how it opens. And what you see here, this is the home page of the KPD. Here is my page and my page items. Right now I have no items on my page. If I want to add items to my page, I have a lot of options. Um, the way I get to those options is this. I'm going to right-click on page items, go down to add. Once I go to add, I can add at this point axiom commands. I can add zones. So say I want to have multiple zones on here. Here I could just simply add uh, a bunch of zones to them so it would switch zones as I hit those buttons. Here I can add new pages there. I can add pages with selected sources on them. So if I want to have a page and I want to have a source with that page, I can do that there. We're going to do that later on, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. Here I can add new pages with source and zone selection. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to go to Axiom here. We're going to Source Select. We're simply going to choose Source 1. And that shows up here. And we're going to do the same thing a couple of more times because we're going to add we have four sources we're going to add four of these but next time we're going to go to source two we're going to continue and we're going to add source three and we're going to add source four one thing you should know about when you have the red X right here and anytime you're programming a KPD keypad Anytime you have a red X next to a source or next to an actual option on there, that means that it's controlling the Axiom system itself. The reason why that's important because you can have these control receivers or other uh, devices that's on your system or on your network that's not necessarily the Axiom. Say, for instance, if you were using a R4 or R1, uh, you wouldn't necessarily need to have the Axiom source uh, control because the axiom would not be it would be a receiver or something but when anytime you have the X there that means that you're controlling the axiom device from here we do have options for this keypad and what we're going to do is go to settings here in the settings windows here this allows you to choose your font this allows you to change your text color change your heading color this is the color that it switches to when you select the source Okay, you can have auto zone uh, assignment, meaning that it's simply going to go to the next zone available. Here, you can actually select a zone and tell it which zone you want this one keypad to operate. Here, we have an IR receiver. If you click that, that turns on the IR receiver built into the keypad, meaning that if you have a handheld remote in that room, that keypad can serve as an IR receiver. Here, this is the brightness level of our keypad, and we can change that. Here's the dim level on our keypad. Uh, when it goes dim, zero means it's going to go all the way black. If we add numbers to there, it's going to go down to that level of dimness. Okay, the default on that is zero. Here's the dim duration, meaning that how long am I going to sit before I actually go dim. The default on that is 30 seconds, and of course you could raise it or lower it. Uh, from that 30 seconds there. Display off in standby, meaning that when you turn your system off, it turns that keypad off. Keypad goes to a standby mode and it's simply going to go black until you put the, push the power button on here. You have dim actions. When things go dim, you can actually execute some sort of uh, command if you wanted to. Okay, Program uh, actions. Okay, These are actions that you can program most likely thing you're going to do with this, you're going to go ahead and notice that there's 32 of them. That's usually a slideshow. You're going to go ahead and you can drag pictures and items on there, or you can actually drag macros on there and have things happen when your keypad is turned off. Most likely, most uh, practical use for this is to go ahead and drag pictures on there. And go ahead and set up a slideshow. You can put a password on your keypad if you choose to. 
at the bottom, we're going to come back to sources at the bottom here. This is where you can choose what color you want your background to be, which is different from this. This is the main background of your keypad. And you can pick and choose which color you would want that to be. Okay, and then click OK on that. Here, if you want it, you can have an image. This image could be the background on your keypad. How do you get to that? Of course, you go to your gallery. And you simply choose an image that you may have in your gallery. You can go ahead and you can drag that over. Once you do that, it'll let you actually scale that. Okay, you can do it landscape, you can do it portrait. If I zoom in and out, this is the actual size of the window of the keypad. And this is how exactly how it would look in that keypad. So you can scale that keypad, or scale that, that item to make it fit uh, the best way you want. Okay, click OK. And that would now be the background that would show up on my keypad. If I choose to go to color, I just simply go to color. And then I would just simply choose a color for my background. We're just going to leave that white for this project. Okay, back up here to sources. This is where we actually name our sources that's going to be on our keypad. The way we do that is this. Just click in the box there and backspace out of there. I'm going to name my sources. My first one's going to be CD. I'm going to go ahead and call this DVD. I'm going to name my next one Tuner. And my next one is going to be Cable. If you have more than four sources, uh, simply go down the, the line here, and you can add, name as many sources as you want, including a media tab can be added uh, to this keypad as well. Okay, once you have all of this set up right here, let me choose the zone here. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, go back to the home page. And one thing you notice, that since we went and set up everything for the Axiom, notice that we not only did it change the name, but it assigned the volume, the power, the mute all that has been assigned to the axiom itself so now it knows that it's going to be controlled by the axiom in the simplest form this keypad could be ready to go I could upload this keypad right now and what would happen when I hit the CD it would switch the axiom to the CD source I'll be able to control the volume up and down the mute and the standby Okay, I can switch to any of these sources and it will work perfectly. This could be a perfectly good working keypad at this point. And that's the most basic. Let's say you want some functionality for that keypad. Say I have CD, perhaps I want to add some functions to that CD. The way you would do that is this. You go ahead and you create a page. You want to add a CD page. And we're going to go ahead and get that page, name it CD. If you notice now, we once again have an empty page here. We have a home we have a home page now with this stuff and we have a CD page. Okay? So here we can tell this what we want to happen when we're on our CD page. The way we do that is this. We want to add some commands to our CD page. So once I add a CD page, it comes up like this. It's a blank page now. And what can I do from there? I want to add some functionality to that CD player right there. So how do I do that? What I'm going to do is go over here to my CD player. Go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to add some functionality to this because I want to actually be able to operate that CD player. Now remember, this is just a keypad. And on this keypad, you have to actually get to each command by going up, down, and then go ahead and select that function that you want to use and then click OK to use that function. That being said, you don't want to have too many functions on here that would make it difficult to use your keypad. So I'm going to add just a few functions to that. I'm going to add to that a play button. I'm going to add a stop. And I'm going to add a pause. Gives you very basic functions, but just, just to show that you can have some functionality on these pages here okay now what do I do with that page here I'm gonna go ahead and click back on my home page here okay and what I do I take the CD page that I just created I just simply drop it right here on top of that CD and then it says here to link commands I'm gonna go ahead and link those commands together now what happens when I push the CD button it takes me to the CD page and when I get to the CD page what do I get? I get these functions. And now I can go ahead and push play or pause. And I'm going to do that 
for a couple of other pages. We have a DVD page. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create another page, call it DVD. And I'm going to do the same thing. I have an empty page here. I'm going to go ahead to my DVD player that I chose. And I believe I have a Denon. So I'm going to go down to my Denon DVD player right here. Open it up. And I'm going to grab some functions. Once again, very basic functions I'm going to grab from my DVD player. Okay, probably the same functions. I'm going to grab a play. I'm going to grab a pause. And I'm going to grab a stop. Now, you can go a little bit further with that. This is a DVD or CD. You may want to skip forward and then skip back. I wouldn't do much more than that, though. That, that's probably the extent of what I would actually do with that. Okay, and once again, I would go back to my home page, take that DVD page, and drop it right here on the DVD page. And I'd go ahead and i put the link on there. And I would continue to do that. I would create one for my tuner, and I would go ahead and I would create one for my cable box. In fact, that's all I'm going to go ahead and put on there. Okay, so what do I do? I go back to my home page. Once again, I go ahead and take my tuner, drop it on my tuner, make my commands, do my cable, make my commands, and now I have a functional system. And the only thing left to do is really just upload this system at this point. First thing I'm going to do is upload the upgrades to my 800. So my 800 will actually know what to do with that. How you do that? You make sure your mini USB is plugged into your computer and to the back, back of this to my 800 now, 800. Uploading this keypad. Okay. And go ahead and highlight it. And then go ahead and do the upload. After that, you want to do the same thing with your keypad. And so what I'm doing now, I'm going to go ahead and plug that same mini USB into the side of my keypad. And I'm going to go ahead and upload this keypad, this program right here, to the keypad. The way you do that, click on the actual KPD and go ahead and hit upload on there. It will give you actually a little question here, and you say yes. As you can see, it's going to go ahead and upload that program to my keypad. Now, this is my KPD keypad. Now, my keypad, you can see, I have my CD player, my DVD player, my tuner. Okay, if I go ahead and select the CD player, I can see the functions that I put there. My play, my pause, my stop. It's there if I want to go back, I'll hit my back button. I can go right down and do the DVD and get the functions that I put on there and that's how you go ahead and program a KPD keypad simple thanks for your time